LG. OLED TVs have a beautiful design and a brilliant picture uh, and they are truly a pleasure to look at. Especially for the gamers among us, an OLED is always the number one choice. But LG has a really big problem and that is this memory board, the power module. And to ensure your TV continues to run as it did before, there are indeed some difficulties. After a few hundred hours, the power module usually gives out. For me, it happened after vacation, I came home and the TV wouldn't turn on anymore. It wouldn't even go into standby mode. And uh, unfortunately, this problem seems to be a common issue. I did some research and looked into it. And many people have the problem that the power module no longer works, the TV won't turn on and it won't come out of standby. Even on easy, we find TVs that describe exactly this problem. And the TV simply won't turn on anymore, probably due to a defective power supply. And if you're experiencing the same issue, then you're in the right place, because before you reach for the hammer, we'll make it easy in this video. Repair your TV so that you can later enjoy watching on your OLED. Again, no matter what size or model you have. The only thing you really need for the repair in this video is actually just a Phillips screwdriver. And that's it. So no technical background knowledge or any soldering is required. All of that is unnecessary. Let's start with step one of the preparation, which is opening the LG OLED TV. And that is step one for now. In this regard, I assume you have already tested your power supply. And before you start, of course, unplug the power cord from your TV. And now let's start by properly positioning the TV. For this, it's best to grab a really nice thick blanket to protect the display because it needs to go over the TV now. Don't be surprised. I put on my old clothes as is customary for a handyman. Yes, then we lay the TV on it. It's best to place a pillow on the display. Underneath so that the display is really well protected and properly cushioned. And with this setup, you can easily access the TV and the screws. Now grab your Phillips screwdriver and start unscrewing on the left side. The power supply, which um, is actually where our problem originates, has very small screws in it. So make sure to sort them well and place them neatly to the side so you can find and reuse them later. Yeah, once you've unscrewed it, you can gently pull on the cables here to open this cover. Just give it a little tug here and it will open up. We're done here for now, but we'll come back to it later because we still need to disconnect the cable here. Once we've done that and open this part, we move on to the stand, which is pressing um, on our display due to its heavy weight. That's why we also unscrew the four screws here to remove the stand first. Of course, we also need to get to the screws underneath as there are two more hidden screws that, ooh, are blocking the casing. So first unscrew the stand, remove the four screws here. And once you've done that, you can simply set the stand aside as we won't be needing it for quite a while. Grab it. So place the four screws on your screw pile. And as I said, make sure to keep it well. Sort everything a little bit. And in terms of the number of screws, we now have one small and four large ones. So we now set the stand aside and place it somewhere or it won't bother us and we can then see that there are two more screws hidden underneath, namely these here, and we need to open them as well. These are again the small screws like the one we had at the beginning. So once you've unscrewed this, you have three small screws of this type. And uh, of course you sort them correctly back into your screw pile so that you know exactly where the screws belong later. Yes, we've done that so far. Now in the pile, we have two small ones, another small one in the middle, and four large screws. And now we see that the thing still has screws, which are specifically here at the bottom right on the side, and there's also another one on the left at the bottom corner. So we need to unscrew those as well to be able to open the casing. We'll do this first so that we can see which power module is inside. So go here and open the screws on the side first the right side once you've unscrewed that then of course you go over to the left side um, remove the screws here as well and with that we would have loosened all the screws blocking the casing 
Of course, there's still a cable sticking out at the top, which means we also need to disconnect that. But you can already see that we can lift the casing a bit at the bottom and near the power button. And that, uh, it's almost detached. Now, of course, we still need to remove the cable on the left side so that we can open the casing. To remove this thing, it's actually quite easy. Just fold it away to the side. And there you can see that it's connected with the plug. It's best to use both hands to disconnect the plug. It has clips on the right and left and you need to squeeze them together. So it's best to use both hands, go to the clips on the right and left and pull the whole part out. Apply a little pressure on the cable, but not too much as it is really clamped quite tightly. So go ahead and wiggle it a bit and then you'll have the part out. And with that, the cable is also disconnected and you can open the TV or rather the casing now and see the heart of the OLED, which we will do now and set the cable aside for the moment. And now we open the TV's casing to access the power board. It's best to start from the middle and start working your way to the left or right first. To lift the whole thing a bit, maybe use a small butter knife that is really not sharp and then you can pry it up a little here. Pry up the left side, then work your way to the right side. Again, start from the middle, go a bit underneath here and try to pry it up. Pull the whole thing a bit forward and then pry it upwards. There's a small sort of uh, a latch in there. You need to pry that out a bit. As mentioned, with a butter knife that is not sharp, it works quite well. And you can then open the casing here afterwards and simply open the thing pulling it upwards to remove the casing. It's a bit of a fiddly task but generally it should work. And you have the heart of the television in front of you like this. It's now open here and you can now look at all the circuit boards. And yes, you can already see here that we don't find any burn marks or anything like that. So uh, our problem lies here again. Examine the power module first see if you can identify any obvious damage at first glance. If that's not the case, we can definitely proceed because we now need to replace the power board. This is the part here on the left, which we first need to order and we can only do that. If everything in the box is indeed in order, that's why we've unscrewed it for now. And we need to remove this board. There are a few screws attached here and so on, and I'll show you later how to remove the thing. However, we will first order this board and take a nice photo beforehand. So that we know exactly where the cables are connected later. If it's a bit dusty here, it's not a problem. But there should be no burn marks or burn holes or anything like that visible. As I said, take a photo of the cables and then we'll proceed to order the board. Uh, that will make your TV operational again. In step two, we now order the power module, which will breathe life back into your TV. And the funny thing is that in LG's spare parts shop, not, no uh, such modules are available for purchase. Here, you can only buy some screws or, and spare parts like remote controls. And honestly, who wants that? Of course, we want to repair our board and that's why we have to resort to something entirely different. Namely, a shop that truly has all the parts for Baderichurum LG TV. We are now going to the site fix, part and the link. I've of course included the link in the description and there we can actually purchase the LG our power module for LCD um, TVs. You can already see that the designation is listed here and it's suitable for certain TV types but I can guarantee you that 90% of LG TVs will work again with it. So you can, before adding the item to the cart, feel free to check again if it applies to your device, whether the power module fits into your device. If you've opened it up and you know what it looks like, then you'll be able to replace it and your TV will work again. But still feel free to look at the list here and you'll see that almost all, um, OLED TVs are listed for the module. It is always the same power module that comes at, uh, causes the CAN errors and thus ensures that your LG TV no longer turns on, even if of course up here. It says LG power module, LCD TV, it is the same module for all. 
OLED TVs. If your TV is not listed here, be sure to search on fixed parts for the appropriate power module for your TV and then we can install it accordingly. As mentioned, the link is down in the description. Just click on it and you'll get to the appropriate module. You can really order the power module super easily. The price sometimes fluctuates a bit. So here, for me, it cost around 220 or so, but I recently saw it for 150. After a few days, the part arrives at your place. Really well packaged and brand new. And that's exactly what we need now because we're going to install it in your TV. And after that, the thing will work again. You'll see that and have a nice positive effect. In step three, we now install the circuit board and test the TV, which should then work perfectly again. So let's start by removing the old circuit board first. To do this, we disconnect the cables here camped and of course keep them in the same order or as we disconnected them. The cable um, up here is a bit tricky and quite firmly in place, so it's best to use both hands again to disconnect the cable up here, and then you're done with that. Now the circuit board needs to be removed, of course. This means unscrewing all the screws here, which you can find along the edges. One here in the middle at the back left and another one. And there are also two more at the bottom here. Unscrew them all, and then you can remove the circuit board. Once you've done that and have removed all the screws uh, without forgetting any, then you can detach the circuit board here and of course throw the old circuit board away as scrap. So remove the screws here and then detach the circuit board by going down here on the bottom left. Take another look at the thing to ensure there are no burn marks inside. That would be an additional error that could occur with the power supply. We now take the new circuit board and place it in the spot of the old one. There is a small click when you have placed it correctly, but generally you can recognize it quite well by the screw heads. Make sure that the cables are not pinched underneath and then screw the circuit board back in place at the familiar spots. Once you've done that, we need to reconnect the cables and as you can see, the cables under my circuit board weren't very professionally arranged, but it's fine. Let's grab the first cable and click it in here. It really makes a small clicking sound when it's properly secured. You can press a bit firmly, nothing should happen as long as you don't use a hammer. Take the second cable as well and click it in here. This one goes in a bit easier and again you'll hear a small click when the cable is in. The same goes for the third cable which you insert underneath here. And then you'll hear a small click again when the cable is in. Yes, with one hand it's always a bit tricky to film with the other hand, but it shouldn't be a problem for you. And then you already have the cable in here. Before you close the thing again, really check once more if any other cables might have become loose and check the cables again. Make sure they are all securely in place now, but everything should be fine. And then we can close the part again and put it into operation accordingly. For this, of course, you grab your case and go from top to bottom, placing it on. At the top, there's a small rail that clicks into place accordingly, and then you can reattach the case, um, press it down a bit more so that it clicks in place, and then you're back to the two screws, screwing them in again. We definitely need these two things to secure the case again. Additionally, we also need to reconnect the power supply. It's very important to, to insert the plug correctly, so the top e should be. The plates here are the contacts, they need to be on top, and then you need to plug it back in and of course close everything up again. Also close the case on the left and right so that the thing is sealed, and of course reattach the stand afterwards. Once that's done and you've reattached the stand, you can set the unit back up again. It's best to have two people remove the cover and check if the display is still in good condition, which it definitely should be. Now grab your power supply and connect everything to have power again. Um, get your remote control, click the TV on, and bam, the picture is back, friends. Your uh, LG OLED TV is now fully functional again with uh, several hundred hours of runtime. And you can also use your old apps again. 
Just as before, because the memory wasn't defective, it was just the power supply module. So everything is still stored as before. If there's a problem here, it's simply due to your internet connection, which might not be active yet. But in general, you can now enjoy watching again, friends. I hope I have helped you with this easy uh, uh, guiding to uh, repair your OLED TV. If so, give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. On my channel, you always find the latest guides for the newest games. Today, once again, a tech video, so friends, enjoy your TV.